the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Well, welcome to Trinity on this second Sunday of Lent, and on this actual St. Patrick's Day, and on what I've begun to call over the years Chicken Sunday, where we hear Jesus describe his love and care for his people in terms of a mother hen. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, but you were not willing. Some of you know that our family raised chickens a couple years ago in a coop in our backyard. For those of you who assisted in that project, uh, I have a lifelong debt of gratitude for you. We wanted just two chickens, which seems easy enough, but we had to buy six from the tractor supply company as their minimum. And then somebody in an act of Lenten almsgiving or in trying to give their problems to us, gave us two more chickens. So we had eight chickens, each with their own feisty personality, each completely oblivious to the danger of staying out of its coop with the foxes all night completely oblivious to the danger of running across the proverbial road during rush hour, each interested in pecking as hard as possible any shiny thing like a wedding ring or a watch or a child with fingernail polish on. They were all loud, they were all stinky, they were all constantly hungry. Honestly, it was like having eight teenagers at home to take care of. But if you've ever seen a mother hen with its babies, that's an amazing sight. I remember walking up to a mother hen once, and as I approached to feed her, she scrambled around to push all of her little ones safely under her and scooch them all into a corner for safety, while also trying to keep warm the eggs that had not yet hatched, ignoring the food that I had brought her so that her chicks could eat it instead later, and at the same time giving off a kind of warning growl, fluffing up her feathers to look bigger and scarier, saying to me, stay away from my babies or else. And as a usual mom trying to do these multitasking things, then her little chicks popped up from underneath her, not happy to be restrained, and showed their thanks to their loving mother by pecking her as part as possible in the eye. Those of you who are parents might be able to relate here. But that mother hen just shut one eyelid and pushed the kids back down again, keeping her eye squarely on her arch enemy, me. How often, Jesus says, have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, but you were not willing. Maybe in the hen, Jesus wants us to see a parable of his own loving care for us. God gives us life and breath as the creator of heaven and earth. He protects us from every kind of danger and every kind of evil. He even puts his own dear son in between us and whatever would harm us. He cares for us, broods over us, keeps us warm, is concerned about us in every way, provides for all our needs, feeds us with all we need in body and soul and life from day to day. And how do we repay him but pop up, try to escape, and peck him in the eyes? We are not willing to be gathered. We would rather run off by ourselves as little helpless chicks, cold and alone in danger, far away from the flock of God, close to the hungry foxes of this world, far away from his arms. You were not willing, Jesus says. That's the hardest part about the gospel. That's the hardest part about the Christian life, for us to realize that God has come to give you and me everything, but we want to do it all by ourselves, all on our own, without him. The God who made us and saved us and sustained us comes to us, but we want nothing to do with him. We have to admit today 
that even though we are beloved little chicks, we live as enemies of God, enemies of the cross. We live like King Herod, worshipers of ourselves. The old Adam and Eve inside each one of us pretends that God is dead and that we have been crowned in his place. Lent is a time for us to admit our hardness of heart, that we have lived to worship and glorify ourselves, not him, that we have trusted mostly in ourselves, not him, and that as Jesus says, we have not been willing to be tucked under his wings, that when he tried to extend his loving arms over us, we have pecked him in the eye and pecked out his image by pecking our neighbors. But today we also see how Jesus treats those who reject him. We see the lengths he will go to care for those who don't want his care. Jesus comes under attack today by the Pharisees, the religious chamber of commerce, and by the evil King Herod. The Pharisees say, get out of here. King Herod wants to kill you. Oh, so do we, but also King Herod. Church and state are united now as enemies of Christ. The cross is looming in the near future. But Jesus will not be deterred. He does not turn his face. He does not change direction. He is all in. He is committed. He loves even his enemies, and you and I are one of them. Christ is always looking for sinners that he will give his life for, that he will bring to faith in him. You tell that old fox, King Herod, Jesus says, you tell that old fox who wants to break into my hen house and get himself a free KFC chicken dinner. You tell him that I am casting out demons on day one and healing diseases on day two, and on the third day, my work is completed. Jesus knows his mission to give himself on the cross as a ransom for many, as a ransom for you and me, and on the third day to rise again in order to save and bless the whole world. Jesus is all in, and he will do whatever it takes to save and to bless you. Farmers have told me that in cases of tragedy, when a barn or a chicken coop catches on fire, that all the animals will try to do whatever they can to escape. Who wouldn't run from flames and smoke? But a mother hen will gather her little ones underneath her and stay put on top of those chicks, no matter the heat, no matter the flames. They will not move or run away, so that it is not uncommon to find a dead hen with her whole brood alive and safe beneath her, all because of the loving sacrifice of herself. And so it is that on Good Friday, Jesus will extend his loving, protecting wings over all who do not deserve it, over you and me. He will stay put, stay firm, and make the sacrifice and take the disaster of our sin and death onto himself. And on the third day, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, on the third day, Easter morning, it will be completed. His work will be done. And like a phoenix, he will rise from the ashes, bringing you and me up with him. That is why St. Paul tells us today in Philippians, that our citizenship, where we belong, is in heaven. We belong to him, so we belong there. We don't belong to ourselves. We don't belong to anywhere or anything or anyone else first except for him. Because who else has given themselves as a sacrifice for you? Who else could die and be raised for you? Who else could bring you through life and death except for your Lord Jesus? Your citizenship, your belonging, your ultimate place to be safe and at home is with Him, Paul says. So stand firm in the Lord. Stand firm in trust. Stand firm in confidence. 
just as a child doesn't wonder how or why, but knows just to stay close in mama's arms. Just as a smart chick stays down and safe under a mama's wings, knowing where it belongs. And when we stand firm in him, we will stand firm with and for our neighbor, with the people closest to us, with the people God has put into our lives with those that we don't know, but we can serve here in our neighborhood and in a nursery in India and around the world. Being citizens of heaven makes us free to do every kind of good here on earth for every kind of person that we meet. One of my favorite churches I visited during my visits in the Holy Land is called Dominus Flevit, which means the Lord wept reminding us of that shortest Bible verse, Jesus wept. It's on the Mount of Olives, which is a hill overlooking Jerusalem, where Jesus wept over the city and spoke the words we heard today. And as you come up to the altar in that church to take communion, as you sing, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, like we will hear in a minute, there's a beautiful stone mosaic where you kneel down, a mosaic of a brown mother hen, heads up, wings stretched out, and 12 little yellow chicks sheltered underneath her. And then red marks, wounds of love in her wings and on her breast. Today, our hen, the one who comes in the name of the Lord, comes for you, comes to give himself to you. So come and kneel, come and find shelter under his wings, come and be nourished as the hen gives his own body broken, his own blood shed, until at last he gathers us to himself in heaven, where with all his brood, with all his chicks, with all his saints, and under the shadow of his wings, we will dwell together in safety forever. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.